Hello ladies and gentlemen. It's been a while since I've been able to ride. Been working a lot. It's been raining a lot. And my bike was in need of licensing. I want to start out this video by giving a shout out to my friend Mark. He's my biggest fan. He's a really nice guy. A little weird. He loves the Broncos and he just happens to be looking for a new boyfriend. If any of you are interested, maybe I'll post a link to his Facebook page in the description. Anyway, today I wanted to touch on the subject of riding a motorcycle. Not like how to ride a motorcycle, but like the physics that goes into riding a motorcycle, why you can actually ride a motorcycle. Now, a lot of people don't know how their engines work. They just know they do. And I get a lot of questions. I recently, re recently rebuilt a 1972 Honda CB175. And I got a lot of questions from people wanting to buy it. I, I pretty much flipped it because I bought this, but got a lot of questions, especially from the kid who did buy it. He didn't know a lot about bikes or engines or anything. And he was asking me all these questions, so I thought I'd put it out there for the world. But basically, how an engine works is whenever you pull the throttle, it opens up the intake valve. That will allow air to be sucked into the engine, into the cylinders. And with this air is, depends on if you have carburetors or if you have fuel injection, but fuel will somehow be mixed with the air in, and it'll be in the cylinder together. The cylinder is where the pistons are. The pistons will compress this fuel-air mixture and then the spark plug will spark and that will ignite the fuel-air mixture, sending the piston back down. It'll explode, the piston will go back down, It'll the gases will then exit and they'll go out through your exhaust. That's It's a lot more detailed than that, but that's the basics of it. And all of this is transmitted to your wheels so you can actually ride via the transmission. And the transmission is just a series of gears. Some move more slowly than others and you'll switch gears. But that's how, that's the basics of how you get the power from the engine and then how the power is then transmitted to your wheel so you can do this. And then also, I've seen a lot of discussions about counter steering. And a lot of people say, no, that's stupid. Why would you steer in the opposite direction of where you want to go? That, they just say that doesn't make any sense, but that's exactly how it works if you're going at speeds above 15 miles per hour or so. See, if you watch, I only have one arm, one hand on the handlebar. I'm going to push it this way, and I'm going to go that way. And I know you couldn't really tell because I'm going so fast. 
but that's exactly what happens and you you don't understand it until you ride a motorcycle but then you kind of do it without thinking about it and that's part of the reason why motorcycles and bikes balance the forks make it to where the front wheel adjusts by itself automatically to a certain extent I mean if you if you're not riding on a bike but it's still going pretty quick it'll stay upright it'll eventually fall over but without you even knowing it you make tiny little adjustments while you're riding and that helps keep it up and also the wheels there's a gyroscopic effect of the wheels but that that doesn't really play much into it it helps a little bit but not much and then getting into turning a motorcycle why you have to lean to turn a motorcycle that's a bit more complicated but initially you counter steer and it throws the bike off balance and it 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 kind of leans it over to the direction you want to go so if you if you steer to the left you're going to lean to the right if you steer to the right you're going to lean to the left and then while you're leaned over the tires on a motorcycle aren't completely round they're not uniform they're kind of like a they're not like a cone but i'm going to use that as an example if you lay a cone on its side and you spin it, it's going to go in circles or it's going to go in a curved path. And that's because the inner diameter and the outer diameter are different and the smaller end is moving faster than the larger end. So you're going to be turning, you're not going to go straight. And that's kind of, that kind of, that plays into how a motorcycle turns when you're leaned on it. But there's a lot more than that going into all of this that I'm talking about. I just don't want to get into the detailed physics right now. Or ever. But if you're interested in that kind of stuff, maybe you should be a physics or engineering major like I am. A lot of interesting stuff. It's really cool to think about all of the things that go into small everyday tasks. Like just to be riding this bike, I'm working against, everything has to be perfectly balanced. The force of gravity, which is 9.8 times the weight of me and the motorcycle, that's how many Newtons are pulling me down. That has to be canceled out by the normal force. And then there's wind resistance. Just all kinds of forces go into everyday tasks you don't even think about. And it's pretty awesome to just sit and figure it out. If you're a physics major also and you want to go further into details on all of the different contributing factors of riding a motorcycle, Go ahead and do that in the description. I'm sure I'd have a, me and some other people would have a good time just chatting about that with you. Go ahead and like the video if you want, if you liked it. If you didn't like it, I don't want you to just push like. Subscribe. I want to thank all the people who have been watching. I have far more views so far than I thought I would at this point and I've gotten a couple of subscribers and I'm grateful for that and I hope to get more you're all awesome